When discussing curriculum planning or design, you may have heard that one of the best ways to approach the process is by designing backward. But what does designing backward mean? Should you start building the unit plan schedule towards the end of the year and work your way backward to the beginning of the year? Or should you start at the bottom of the templates and work upwards? Or should you start looking at last year's curriculum and use that as a starting point for this year's work? And despite whatever backward may mean, how can open curriculum support that process? If you search for backward design on the internet, you will find many explanations depending on who shared this information. In simple words, the idea means that you should plan curriculum with the end in mind as a starting point, then work your way backwards to more specific curricular actions. But what is the end? It depends on the scope of your planning, something we're going to dive deeper into in the rest of this video. But in the most general sense, the end or the final outcome means the learning you want students to take away for use in new situations. Learning that lets them learn further once they go through your curricular experiences. It doesn't have much to do with the timing and end of your academic session, Instead, it puts emphasis on what students take away and less on a teacher's actions. Also, most of the advice out there on backward design is only on unit planning. In reality, the general idea spreads across all aspects of curriculum planning. All curriculum planning should begin at a course level. Course plans let you set the vision for what the course should do for enriching the life of the learner. You don't discuss the specific techniques and pedagogical choices on this plan. Instead, you focus on where you think the learner is and where the learner should be after the completion of the course. So think big picture. Backward design tells us to think of the end first. What do you think the end means in the context of course plans? While you might want to think about specific abilities and skills students learn, we encourage you to think even bigger. Have a conversation with all the teachers and administrators invested in the students participating in this course and ask, how do we want to help students reach their fullest potential through this course? If you seek the answer to this with sincerity, you will be able to articulate a philosophy for the course. Units are the focal point of the backward design process. This is because articulating the end of learning is hard to do without a focus on a specific topic or theme. Units encapsulate such a focus. That is true regardless of the subject we're working on. Like course plans, unit plans benefit a lot from sections and subsections on your template to design backward. For example, a template that looks like this has very little opportunity to think in terms of designing backward. But a template that looks like this has a whole lot more support for designing backward. Let's discover why. There are two big things you need to consider when designing a unit backwards. The first is, in a unit, what does the end mean in making students better versions of themselves? This depends on the topic or the theme. The end in a unit discussing bias might be a life lesson. Authors have varying motivations and interests when writing a story. Our readers should be critical of claims made by authors that aren't adequately justified. But the end of a unit in a technical subject like mathematics might be different. For example, fractions help us quantify parts of whole things so we can work with them more easily. The end of a topic or theme goes to the very essence of the value of that content in life beyond the classroom and in future learning. In your plan, you represent this end with sections and subsections like big ideas, big questions, essential questions, enduring understandings. Which sections your template shows depends on the preferences of your institution. There's a second thing you need to consider in designing a unit backwards. We need to remember the relationship units have with courses and lessons. More specifically, we've already done a lot of thinking on what the end looks like for the students by writing the course plan. 
That's including what competencies should be targeted in accomplishing that end. An important part of designing backwards is using this thinking on the broader end, like on the course plan and trying to target some aspects of that at smaller levels, like in multiple unit plans. The same relationship continues between units and lessons. You can do this by picking those competencies from the course plan that align well with the topic or theme that you will be targeting in this unit. It is only after you've done these backwards design steps that you should move on to other parts of your unit planning. Regardless of when you do that, we can now jump to look at how we bring the backwards design process to lesson plans. You get the drill by now. You've got to think of the end for the student before you plan and write it down along with what we're going to assess in the lesson. But this time around, we've already written the high level end statements in our course and unit plans. So we can jump straight into capturing the competencies in our lesson plan.